like a big deal. All right, so last time we learned about orthographic views, so now everyone knows how to do top, front, right. We learned how to add dimensions, so everyone should be able to at least create that drawing. Now, in some situations, we learned last time that you cannot dimension hidden lines, and usually the top, front, right are not good enough in order to show all the different views, especially the inside details um, of a part. So what happens if there's a lot of inside details, and I really can't dimension them from the outside? That's why we're going to learn sectioning today. So we're going to go briefly through some of the rules in terms of terminology and what does it mean and um, what are we really doing and then we'll jump into SOLIDWORKS in order to uh, apply those. If my slides gets flipped. All right. Um, so again, everything is hyperlinked so you guys can go through this and you have access uh, to that PowerPoint. Now, so the whole idea is if you take a look at this rock or, or pretty much anything that you hold in your hand, you know, your phone, whatever it is, there's a lot of details from the inside. And are you laughing because it says ugly rock? Wait a second. Wait for the next slide. Okay, so you can't really see what's happening from the inside unless you go ahead and cut it. And that's the whole idea of sectioning. If you go ahead and cut something, it could be a pretty rock. Okay? <laughs> so you see that basically this is what we want to expose um, in our parts. So if we go ahead and actually choose a SOLIDWORKS part, and we choose a cutting plane, so we learn about cutting plane and section lines. Remember those? This, the symbols for them, uh, long, short, short, long, right, with the arrows, and the arrows point in the direction of your eyes. That's kind of what today is all about. We're going to go in details um, on that piece. So if we go ahead and, and slice through that, notice that if I'm just looking at this view over here, I can't really tell what's happening from the inside. It could be, you know, just this hole going all the way through. It could be hollow whatever it is, but now when I actually see this, I'm able to uh, realize all the details. The problem is if I keep it in this view, everything from the inside is going to be in hidden view, so I can't really dimension it, but notice now, now, uh, notice now that everything that was hidden over here got exposed. You see that? So all the hidden lines that we're going to show all the details from the inside now are exposed visible lines, so technically I can dimension them without breaking any rules from the stuff that we learned last time. Okay, so if we go ahead and create a uh, section line, let's first try to remember um, how do we understand those sec uh, sorry those cutting plane lines. So this is a cutting plane line, and this is the front view. So I'm applying a cutting plane line on the front view. Okay, and it's a horizontal line. So considering it's a horizontal, remember it's the mirror plane. Remember when we talked about um, the top and the bottom, they're mirrored with respect to the front. So if you think that there's a you know mirror over here. Right, we're always going to get the top or the bottom. Now the arrows are the direction of your eyes. Your arrows are pointing down. That means you're looking at it from the top, and that's why you get the top as a section view. So basically, what this drawing is saying is, if we go ahead and cut the front plane, we are going to get the top plane. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is the uh, cutting plane line, and those slanted lines are the section lines. Okay. So what you can do in some situations is keep your top view as it is, you know, showing the hidden line, showing whatever it is, um, and then add the section view as an additional view. So that's one option. But considering this is a cylinder, right, the top view and the front view are going to give me the exact same thing. So that's why I decided in this, in this problem to basically remove the top view completely and make the top view my section view. Okay? Now, let's see what happened here. If we look at all these dotted hidden lines, once we cut through them, now they become visible lines. Okay? That's one point. The second point is we don't notice any hidden lines in the section view. So one of the biggest takeaways from today's lecture is there are no hidden lines in the section view. Okay? Now, the section lines are actually bound by visible lines. So you notice that they do not come into this region because these regions are where the gaps exist. So that's how I know I'm actually cutting through solid material over here, and there's hollow uh, pieces over here. Okay? So we're going to go through a couple of exercises, and you're going to see um, how we're going to do that. All right, so I'm doing now the front view, and I'm cutting uh, vertically. So that's why I could either get left or right. Now my arrows are pointed um, <coughs> in that direction, so basically your, your eyes are going to follow that. That's why I get my right view. Does that make sense? Okay. 
So we talked about section lines. All right. Now you'll see here the section lines are slightly different. As you start progressing through this, and we're going to talk about this in uh, when we get to the SOLIDWORKS piece, depending on what material you choose, you can actually have different section lines. So sometimes you might look at something and you might be able to automatically understand what material is it made from. Wood, concrete, steel, whatever it is. Now, of course, when we come to steel, there's like a million different types of steel, right? Because it depends on the carbon concentration. Um, this is not going to tell you exactly what it is. But this should at least give you a visual of what material category does it belong to. You still have to specify what material you're using in that definition box at the bottom of your um, uh, drawing. So here are some more examples. And I'll show you the whole library once we get to the software section. Okay, so these are the rules just like before. And you'll see what basically what I just said a second ago. They are bound between visible lines. Okay, they are parallel. Do not color them. So when you do the hardware section, do not just like shade the whole thing. Just use slanted lines. They're usually at 45 degree angle, 30 degree angle, whatever it is. Uh, just make sure that they're parallel to each other. Don't. Don't put them vertical, okay, or horizontal. Just anywhere between 30 and 45 is fine. And uh, just do not shade the whole thing, okay? Uh, only the visible edges are shown. Basically, there's no hidden lines. And I cannot make this font any bigger, okay? So no hidden lines whatsoever in a section view. Okay, SOLIDWORKS is not going to understand that automatically. So you have to manually go and do it. So we're going to go through that too. All right, so we're going to be dealing with two types of sections, full sections and uh, offset sections, okay? There's one more option, it's called uh, half sections. We're gonna talk about it briefly, I'm not gonna really focus on it, because you're gonna see that it's not that big of a deal, because um, you can just replace it with a full section and get the same effect, okay? So, the whole idea of a full section is we have a part and we wanna cut it all the way through. So just like it says, it's a full section, we're gonna cut the entire part it's one straight cutting plane. Okay, so if we go ahead and do that, if we go through here, if we go through here, can talk today. Basically, what we're doing is we're going like this. Okay, and then we're continuing our cut here. Okay, now this is the top view. Okay, so I'm cutting this way, and then my arrows are pointed this way. Basically, I'm removing this piece, right? And I'm looking at it now from here in order to fill in my front view. This is what you have to do for your homework. So for your homework, you're going to have to section your top view, and you're going to you have to get your front view as that section view. Does that make sense? So you cut the top, and you get the front. So what do we get from here? We're going through solid material here, so if I'm looking directly at it, I should be able to see this square. So we, again, remember the, the four steps that we covered before? Visible lines, hidden lines, center lines, center marks. Well, now we don't really have um, hidden lines. So we're still going to follow the exact same steps, but we don't have hidden lines. So we're going to go through it, and we're going to try to outline. So we have this small square here, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, then we're going to go, and I'm able to see this hole here, and I have this square cut. So if I go ahead and line it up, I have it already slightly dotted to, to help me out here. But you guys will have a, your own ruler. And I'm going to be able to see this hole here, so I can actually line up my hole. And this is going to be really bad, because I'm using a mouse to do it. And then I'm going to come over here, and I can see this is actually a drilled hole, right? So I should see something. Let's see, where does this go to? Up to here. And okay. Then ah. Okay, so these are the, my visible lines, and then I go ahead and fill in with my center lines and center marks. Do you guys agree with this, by the way? Looks good? Yeah. Let me clean it up.
need to get one of these bamboo tablets. Better. Okay. Now we have to put our center lines and center marks. So we have a center line here. We have a center mark here. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So let's see how straight lines look. <laughs> Just blink your eyes twice and you can see this. Okay. Now, we just finished our visible lines. We, vi we finished our uh, center lines and center marks. So we're still going to keep the four-step process, except now we don't really have that step two where we put hidden lines. Our step four is going to become section lines. Okay? So now section lines are bound between visible lines. So anytime there's a uh, visible lines that I actually cut through, I'm just going to use uh, slash lines over here. Right to represent where my materials actually exist when I cut through this. So this is hollow, right? Because I'm cutting through empty space here, and then material, material, and then empty. So that's why I tell you to use a geometric set. Okay. Okay, I gave you the material here when we started. Steel, that's why the lines are are double. Okay, are we good? Alright, so let's keep let's keep rolling. Alright, so half section. The whole idea of a half section, if a cylinder exists, or if a part has an axis of symmetry, instead of doing a full section, I can do half of it and automatically assume or you know deduce what the other half's gonna look like because it's you know symmetrical on both sides. So the whole idea is instead of basically cutting this all the way through, I'm going to have to cut it, you know, half of it. And then I see half of it and I see the other half. Now the problem with, the, with this, the reason I'm not a big fan of it is we're not going to be doing a lot of this by hand. So in SOLIDWORKS it's just a matter of drawing a line a bit longer than drawing it here. Okay. Some students might find this difficult because your eyes now, you, you can't, you know, your eyes are pointed. Okay, so my rule of let your eyes follow the arrows stops working. Uh, but you kind of get the idea. So if we kind of go through an exercise, here's, a, here's one. So basically, if I just take this and I do a full section. So this is my front. I'm going to do, uh, sorry, this is my side view. And I'm going to do a full section. I get something like this. Now if I do half a section, I'm basically going to get half of this piece which is the normal, and half of the cut piece. So I get something like this. See that? So I'm still, so I'm taking half of this piece, which is the non-cut, and I'm taking half of this piece, which is the cut. Okay? And this one? We didn't cut it. Yes. Section, with the minute that you call it a section view, it does not have hidden lines. Okay? So we're not going to be doing a lot of these, or any of these actually. Okay, we're only going to be doing full and offset. So offset we're going to be using a lot, so that's why I want to get to that and show you how to do it. Okay, so here's a part. Now notice that that part has a counter bore here and a slot here. So the problem with that is I can create two section views using a full section. So if I'm going to use just full section, I'm going to have to cut it this way. I'm going to have to cut it again. Now using offset section, I can actually do it in one view and I can get both details. So the whole idea of offset view is I can create one section view that passes in as many features as possible without creating a full section for each one of those features. Okay, so here's an example. I just, this is the craziest part, 
Okay, it's not functional. I don't know what it does, but it has a lot of holes and, and stuff. All right, if I go ahead and create section AA, I'm basically passing through this counter bore, through this tapped hole, and then off, right? So I was able to hit two of those features. Your goal is to actually go through as many features as possible, but remember, you can't do this. Like, you can't go over, down. Yeah, you can go up, but you want to make sure that when you go up, you're actually not hitting when the feature starts. <coughs> okay? So if you're going up and the fillet has already started, too late. Okay? Skip it and let it go for with something else. Does that make sense? So that's, that's A. And then B, we're going basically through this. We're going down. And then we're taking this piece. And then C, we're just going through here. And then we're taking that smaller hole and taking it out. Okay? Now, another possibility is maybe for C, you could have gone this way, down, over, up, and take it here. Um, but again, you don't know the dimensions of this part, so you're probably looking at it visually, but once you go ahead and cut it in SOLIDWORKS, it might be really tight that it's not worth it, so you create another view. But you can get three different section views. But notice how I was able to get three section views instead of six, because I have one here, two, three, four, five, six. So I was able to chop that by half. This one? Yeah. Um, maybe you can cut this way. I was just cutting from the top. But if you're going, um, you could you could cut this way too. So that's a good question. I mean, if you want to cut, that's fine too, right? But I'm cutting um, top and I'm getting the sides of them. Okay. Yes, yes. So basically what I'm saying is these are the most important. I want to show counter bores. I want to show these base holes. That's why I'm showing you these. But if I say show me every possibility, every possibility or show me section view of, uh, of all these holes, then sure. Right? But like from here, you can see that by just taking a simple right view, I'm able to dimension this hole. <laughs> the whole idea of a section view is what? Show the details that you can't really see. So, for this guy, well, is this a through cut? What is happening here? Right? So maybe I want to see what's happening from the inside. And that's the whole idea. Okay? Notice none of them have hidden, uh, hidden lines either. Okay? Those dotted lines are just guides for me because usually I sketch on them. Alright, so that's what I want to get done in terms of the terminology. Any questions? All right, go ahead and fire up SolidWorks and launch your favorite bracket. And don't put it in top front right yet. Just uh, open up the part itself. We're going to do a couple things with it. Okay, so last time we learned how to use the hole wizard, so we're going to use that again. So not only are we going to do a full section, but we're also going to do um, an offset section. So just go to the top face, and it doesn't matter really what size counter bore you're going to add. We're just adding it for illustration purposes. So 
I'm just using an M10 counterbore <coughs> through all and I want to put it slightly off so maybe like somewhere here and I'm just gonna go ahead and dimension that like 13 and 28 Maybe M10 is too big. I'm going to choose, um, say, an M6. There we go. So if you want to see the M's, remember you have to change this from ANSI inches to ANSI metric from the drop down. <laughs> OK. So remember the whole wizard is under the features tab. It's an option called whole wizard. Okay. And then just choose counterbore. Choose anti-metric. And I chose an M6. It's up to you what you want to choose. And then don't forget to position it uh, using the position tab. So click on the position tab and try to position it and use a smart dimension to fully dimension it. Okay, and let's do that one more time, but now I'm just going to put a regular uh, tapped hole, so I'm going to go to Hole Wizard. You know what? Let's do something more interesting. Let's because we haven't learned how to do a slot. So under the Sketch tab, so select the top face under the Sketch tab. Go ahead and select Slot. Okay, so you see where it says Straight Slot. So go ahead and click on that. And the way that we're gonna draw a slot if you remember from last lecture a slot is measured from the center to the center right and then the, the radius or the diameter so let's say I'm gonna put a slot somewhere here and basically what you're doing is you're just drawing the line that connects the two centers and then if you move your mouse up and down you should get the thickness of the radius of course we're not gonna worry about that until we put the smart dimension but if you just go ahead and draw something and then using the smart dimension tool we can go ahead and dimension that Okay. If you're slightly stuck, just talk to the people next to you. And now go ahead and extrude cut that through all. Okay. Okay, are we good? Now you're probably wondering <coughs> why do I even need a section view for this? Because using the whole call out, right? I'm able to you know, just measure this and it will tell me the depth, it will tell me everything, right? Now, one question that was asked to me last time is, should we put like a cut on the inside here, right? Some sort of cut from the inside? Well, in SOLIDWORKS it works, but in terms of machining, 
how can you actually dig materials from the inside without really damaging the outside, right? If you want to drill a hole, you actually have to carve the surface out first. So does that make sense? So we can't just, you know, draw a square here, offset it, and, and you know, we should be fine. But if you guys remember the V6 drawings, there was a lot of section views in there because there's a lot more details, and that's why we could, um, you know, we could actually expose all the details so we can dimension them. But it's just a class practice so we can show you the, the features. Okay? All right, so does everyone have this? <coughs> yeah? What? Generally? Okay. All right, so now we're going to go to File, Make Drawing from Part. And go ahead and choose a ANSI landscape as usual. Or you can bring in your own format if you have that. If you have your own sheet, bring that with you. Okay, so before I get started, one of the mo most important things that we kind of talked about today was that we have different stripes and different appearances depending on the materials, right? So how does SOLIDWORKS understand what is the material for the part? So I'm going to minimize this for a second. I'm going to go back to my part and let's talk about selecting materials. Over here from the design tree, you should see something called material not specified. See that? Now leave that over there, don't do anything. Now we're gonna uh, click on the drop down menu for options. Okay, so the same way that we used to change the units before 2013 had it here in the bottom. And if we go to material properties, we'll see that if we don't have any material selected, the standard is a 45 degree uh, slanted line and they're all parallel, sp parallel spaced with respect to each other. Okay, so that's kind of the standard here. Now, what are the other possibilities? Well, let's do this. If I right click on material and then I click on edit material, notice that I have some possibilities here that usually those are the fast selections, but if I go to the actual menu, edit material, I should be able to see many different options. Steel, iron, aluminum, copper, titanium. So you should see this giant library of stuff. And <laughs> as you click on the plus sign next to the folder, so you can see the materials inside of them, let's say we're choosing aluminum and then 1060 alloy. The minute that you click on it, you're going to see a couple of things. One, you're going to see all the mechanical properties. So if you guys had statics and dynamics, okay, in statics, everything is nice and the world is perfect and nothing bends and nothing moves. Keep living in that dream. Okay? Once you take 215, right, which is solid mechanics, then everything bends, everything moves, everything has, you know, if you apply too much force, it's going to get deformed. So all these numbers, we're going to be talking about those later on, Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, yield strength, ultimate strength, all that stuff, we'll talk about that later on. Now, if you go to crosshatch, you should be able to see what is the appearance if we go ahead and do a section view for that material. Okay? Now, the problem that I was telling you is notice that for all aluminums, although they're changing in their properties, notice that their properties are changing, but the crosshatch is not changing. So don't ever assume that by just seeing this, oh, this is going to be a 1060 alloy. That's why you have to specify what material you're going to go with. Does that make sense? So go ahead and pick something for now. I don't really care which one you pick. So just pick something and click on apply and then hit close. Two things will happen. It will be updated in the design tree and the appearance of your, um, <laughs> I hear amazement. That means you're doing it right. <laughs> so you can change the color. Okay. So right click, edit material. And by the way, there's a lot of stuff here like, sustainability stuff, custom materials, there's like uh, wood, you know, do you want balsa wood, cedar, whatever it is. And the minute that you apply them, it looks, you know, different. Okay? Sustainability will actually 
we're, we'll talk about that, but you can actually run an entire sustainability report on your product. You can say, you know, where is it manufactured from, where is it being shipped to, and stuff like that, and it will tell you what is the footprint of your parts. Okay. <laughs> yes. You cannot manufacture air in the machine shop. No, that's not what it means. Okay. All right. Stop with your excitement, kids. Listen up. <laughs> All right. Can we move on from this? So we selected the material. Now I'm going to minimize. I'm going to go back to my to my um, drawing. Thank you. Alright, so first thing, before I ever forget, the minute that I select the materials, I want to come back here and I need to specify it where it says materials. It's not going to pick it up. And for now, you guys don't know how to make it pick it up. And I'm not going to tell you because I want you to do it manually until I show you the easy way later on. So right click, edit sheet format. <laughs> okay, mine does it. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Over here, there should be some gibberish. This is basically the code that it's ready to pick up from the from the part itself. So if I go ahead and close that, save my part, and try to open up the drawing, I usually don't want to tell you this. Okay? Still didn't pick it up, huh? Don't forget to change it, by the way, to uh, uh, third angle projection. Okay, that's fine. I'll I'll show you. I'll show you how to add these. Okay, so right click, edit sheet format. You should see something like this. Don't worry about it if it's not working for now. Just double click on it and do it manually until we get to the point where I actually show you how to link all the stuff. Okay, so for now, so I'll, I forgot what I chose, but I'm just going to say balsa wood. Okay, and again, you add your name, you add all that stuff. You have your own sheet format. If you want to update that, feel free to do that too. Okay, and then purple arrow, and there you go. Your material is right there. Okay, are we good? All right, let's bring in the top view only. So if you remember how we bring in the top view, we're going to click on View Layout, Model View. Since the bracket is open in the background, it's going to be selected automatically. Hit Next. Okay, we're going to come here. We're going to click on Top. Make sure our top has hidden lines. Bring it over here. Okay. Take it down to the front. You guys lost. All right, let's do it traditional way. <laughs> All of you have been using the standard three view. Okay, if you've been using the standard three view, here's the deal. If I click on standard three view, yeah, they will they will populate over here. That's fine. So all of you have this. You want to go that route? Okay, the deal is I want my front view to be my section view. So I'm going to have to click on the front and delete it. Okay, so remember what I just did. By removing this front, I deleted the link between those. Okay, so I have to be kind of critical about this for a second. But you're going to see why I was doing only top and then the front, not just the standard three view. Because I can grab this guy and look at this. This is not the right anymore. So this is not really very, very good. So I'm just going to leave it here on the side so as, as a constant reminder that we did something wrong. But this is my top view. I'm going to go ahead and put hidden lines on it. I'm going to add any center, uh, center lines or center marks. So we don't have any center lines, but I, of course I have a center mark for the slot here. And uh, for the slots, please make sure that, see what it says, slot center mark. Choose the second one. So you have 
one here and one here because you have to locate the centers of both circles. Is that clear? Do you want to go back? Okay, so does everyone have the top view? Alright, we're going to go to annotations, center mark, questions? Okay, and then we're going to zoom in and click on this arc, but then it will put one right in the center here. So what we want to do is where it says slot center marks on the side, we're going to click on the second option. So it puts two each, uh, one at each hole. Okay. <coughs> Go ahead and click check. All right, I'm not going to worry about dimensioning for now because you guys should know how to do that. But I'm going to show you how to do section views. So if I want to get the front, okay. By the way, this is <coughs> the top, so you should be able to remember that. But if I want to get the front as my section view, am I cutting vertically or horizontally? Horizontal. Okay. So here's how we do it. The first thing that we need is we need to draw the line that we want to sketch, that we want to cut across. So if we go to sketch, and some of you might already do this, so listen up for a second. So under the view layout, there's an option called section view. When you click on it, it will tell you, you know, you can just draw it directly, or you can draw it from the sketch and then section it off. So it's up to you. Okay, you're gonna see why I was doing the line because when we do the align or uh, offset section. Okay, so let's say I'm gonna actually do a section through here, through here, through here. What can I do here? How many? Like, if I'm just gonna do a full section, I'm gonna have to do three different full sections to show the details for this guy, for this guy, and for this guy. So let's just do one now to kind of play around with it and get comfortable. I'm, I'm going to start somewhere here, but I want to make sure that my line actually crosses right in the center. So the way that I do that is I'm going to hover over the center. I didn't click anything. I'm just going to hover. I'm going to move my mouse very slowly so that I can see this blue outline. And I'm going to make sure that my mouse or my cursor is outside my boundary box. The reason that I'm doing that is remember those arrows are going to come in play. So if I try to click it here, or here, the arrows are going to overlap my visible line. That's going to cause a confusion. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to draw one here. I'm going to take it to the other side and finish up my line. And there you go. You'll see that a view will pop out. <laughs> okay. Now, before I click on it, You'll see that I have arrows pointing down, and what happens if I want arrows pointing up? My first question is, where, where should those arrows be pointing, up or down? If I want the front, up. So it's pointing down, that's not what I need. Do you see where it says flip direction? So if I go ahead and click on that, now it points up. Okay? Notice that my cross hatch might be slightly different than yours because I chose some weird wood grain on here, but you get the idea. <laughs> Is that clear? Now look what happens. If I actually make it flip down, do you see how mine has some hidden lines in it? Right? So by the way, if it's down, this should be over here, correct? Because it won't be the front, it will be the back. Okay? So let's say I'm going to do this just because I want to get a point across. If I go ahead and put it here, you know, and I can move this. This is not a big deal. I can move these. And sometimes you might have bigger sheets, so that's perfectly fine. But this is absolutely not acceptable because I can still see hidden lines. So that's what I was telling you. You have to come back, click on it, and make sure that you click on the first option, which says wireframe. <coughs> I actually prefer <coughs> I actually prefer hidden lines removed 
and that's <clears throat> really the best way to do it. So if you click on the third option, that's what you should be seeing. Okay? Does that make sense? Now let's do the other. By the way, notice I can always come back. I can click on this and I can say, oh, I made a mistake. I can flip the direction and I can move it back down. So nothing is like permanently damaged or anything if you do anything wrong. You can still move them. Even if I decide to, choose to change my materials, just minimize this, go back to my part. Hey, you know, I'm not going to go with cedar. I'm going to go with 1060 alloy. There you go. The crosshatch gets updated automatically. Any questions? Can you change the size of the section edge? The size of, yes. Um, anything that you want to change in terms of font, stuff like that, you're going to have to come to options. Okay, and there's a, uh, let's see, document properties. This is for different lines. It should be on. There should be an option called section, if I remember it correctly. View labels. Sorry, I'm not really seeing that. Is it under document properties? Oh, view labels. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So you can change all that stuff. You, I mean, you can specify the arrow to be whatever you want. And you can change the font type, font size, all that stuff. Okay? Are we good? Now, what is this here? Okay, so this is the slot, right? This is the outside cut. This is the edge cut. Outside cut, edge cut. Okay? Now, everything else is what? It's hidden. So that's why I can't see them. So this only shows me this piece. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and practice with something that requires an offset section. So now instead of actually cutting horizontally, by the way, if you just delete A, the section will delete with it. So if you just click on the line, on the section line that says AA, that will go with it too. Now let's go ahead and do something that requires us to go vertically but through all of these. So something a bit more exciting, right? So now what I can do is I'm going to go to sketch. And that's why I was telling you before, I like to draw my path before I start doing my sections. Because if you just do what I did a second ago, remember, we just drew one line, it automatically did the cut. Now we will have to draw three different lines to go through all these different features. So that's why we're going to start with line. And let's say I'm going to start from here. So again, hover over the center, move it slowly so you can see the, the dotted line, the blue dotted line. I'm going to start with something outside the box. And this has to be one continuous line. You cannot be hitting escape every time you're done. So here's the deal, guys. Click, I move up, and I think, okay, this position is good. So I click, and I move. Now you get here, and you're like, okay, I don't know where where the center of the other guy is, it's not giving me a blue line. All you have to do, just hover over the center, and then again, move slowly, and it should lock it in where it, it is at 90 degrees. And then you click again, you move up, I click, I move over, again, I can't locate the center of this guy, so I hover over it, take it down, click, and take it all the way out. And now hit escape. So you'll see a faint gray line that if you click on, all of it should be selected and it should be a combination about between uh, blue and black. Okay? So you should see this line as one continuous line going through the whole thing. Don't worry about your box expanding because it will expand, but it's when you drew your lines you know, just make sure that those tips are not so close to the actual visible edges. Does everyone have this? Okay. So now all you have to do, you just click on the line. We're going to go to View Layout. 
and do not click. So some, some people click on the drop down and they click on a line section view. We're not going to be doing a line. We're actually doing just regular section view. So just go ahead and click on the line and then click on section view. And notice I can move it to the left and the right, but considering this is just a practice, let's just go ahead with the flow and I can put it right there. Okay. Go ahead and remove the hidden lines by selecting hidden lines removed, which is the third option under the display style. So the third box under display style. Okay. Any questions? All right. Is this done? Are we good? You think we're done here? Are you going to answer me if I ask you anything today? Center lines, right? So we did the visible lines, we did the section lines, we still need the center lines and center marks, right? So we have kind of a cylinder here, another one here, and another one here. So let's go ahead to annotations, center lines, and we're going to click on the outside boundaries of each one of those, and it should add a center line. where it belongs. So let me do that again because I see some people looking at me. So center line, we're going to click on this boundary and this boundary and it, it would add a center line. Then this boundary and this boundary. Then this boundary and this boundary. Okay. Are we good? Any questions? Okay. So this is section view. Now I'm going to take it a bit off and I'm going to talk about additional views that we can have. So under view layout, now we know how to do standard view. We know how to do model view. We know how to do projected view, and we know how to do section view. Now, what does this deal with detail view? If you remember, the detail view is kind of like a magnifying glass. So let's say, for some reason, I want to show the details over here. And by the way, remember, this is just a class practice. I'm not following any rules of projection, top, front, right. I'm just showing you the different features, but you guys should have the understanding of how to organize them uh, in the right format. So if I click on detail view, what it basically going to draw is a circle and that circle is going to be the magnifying glass. So let's say I want to magnify this piece right here. All I have to do is just draw a circle and I want to make sure that that radius, you see that radius, that dotted radius is actually somewhere that's not overlapping the part because you're going to see what happens the minute that I click it's going to have a blowout over here Okay, and basically this is a zoomed, zoomed view of that piece because I want to really focus on that counterbore for some reason. Okay, now again, if you think this is way too big, way too small, all that is modified here from the properties window. So you can use a custom scale, you can make it smaller. You can make it bigger, or you can use the sheet scale or the parent scale. It's up to you. Okay, but all that could be modified from here. Does that make sense? Okay. So, check, check, projected view check. We're not going to be doing any aux view. <coughs> um, section view done. Detail view done. Broke out section. Now this is a cool one. Let's go ahead and bring in the front view. So if you guys remember, we're going to click on the top, go to projected view, and just move my mouse down, and that should give us that should give us the front. Okay. 
Now, what a broken out section view does is like, it's kind of like x-ray vision. Like you can see through the part of some of it instead of the whole thing. So what you can do is <coughs> I'm going to grab bro broke out section. And basically what you can do is instead of drawing a line, you can draw a spline, you can draw a contour, you can draw uh, pretty much whatever you want of that piece that you want to cut. So let's say I'm going to cut somewhere here. <coughs> and by the way, this is a flexible spline, so you can put as many points as you want and kind of connect them as long as you end up with the first point being the last point. Okay? Now over here, it tells you what is the depth. I always like to click on the preview so I can see what's happening. But notice that you see this yellow piece, yellow line. This is how deep you're cutting through it. This is how deep you're seeing through it. Notice as I increase my distance, I can see through I can see through more and more of this. You see that? Right? So remember, broke out section does not generate any additional views. It's actually done on the view itself. Is that clear? I'm just showing different options because we're kind of getting to the end of that, knowing what to do with the drawing phase of the class. So I'm just going to show you other stuff too. Are we good? All right. Now, last time we talked slightly about crop view. <coughs> Let's talk about that one more time. So, um, under crop view over here, it's basically if I want to like not show the whole thing. If I just want to show a piece of it. For example, even for this section, if I just want to show, um, because I'm using this piece. Let's say even for this. This is taking too much space. I only want to show a piece of it. What I can do is I can draw a sketch around it. So I only want to show that counterbore. So this is kind of my square or my rectangle. Okay. And I'm going to click on it and then go to view layout. And it's not letting me crop. It's not going to let you, it's not letting me crop because it's already a detailed view. You cannot do a detail in the detail. Let me bring in one more view here. I'm going to bring in the side view. Okay, so let's say I'm only going to show this top piece. I can draw a rectangle on the piece that I want to keep. Okay, then go to view layout crop view and it will only keep that piece okay any questions all right so let's do a quick week yeah did you put your square on any one of those detail views okay uh, bring in your right view draw a square around where you want to cut Okay, and then go to view layout and then click on crop view. Okay. So let's do a quick recap. <coughs> Standard three view. Any questions on those? Model view. It should keep them top, front, front, right. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Yeah, because remember I told you sometimes you can spread them out so you can include more detailed views in between them. Okay. Um, model views. Any questions on those? Projected view. Section view. Detail view. Broke out section. So sometimes, let's say there's a small feature here that you want to see, but you don't want to create an entire new view for it. So you can go ahead and just include it as a, as a part of it. Okay? So uh, let's say I want to create a, um, 
it broken out for this piece here. All I have to do is click on broken out, draw the the area that I want to break out, okay, and then specify the depth at which I'm cutting in, and I can see the depth from here. Okay. Yes. No, it's it's automatically kind of like assumed, but if you want to put a note, it's always helpful. Okay. It's it's honestly rarely used and the majority of the times you're probably going to see the need to actually just do a full section too. Okay. Uh crop view. We talked about break view, right? Okay. No. Okay, so what does break do? For very long pieces. All right. So let's say we're assuming this is a very long piece here. Okay, although it's not. Okay. So all we have to do is just click on break view and it tells you specify the I can't do it for this one. Ah. All right. So let's say this is really long. I want to shrink it down. I get these zigzag lines if you remember them we talked about them in class or sometimes if you don't want the zigzags, you can do the curve. Remember those? So you can choose which one you want. I can say start from here, end here. There you go. So it didn't really cut the part, it's just visually shrinking it down. And I can decrease the sizing between the two. So if you want like more space on your page or anything like that. Yeah, I mean if if you actually go to smart dimension and measure from here to here it did not change the distance okay it's still the real number it's just visually it's too big for this sheet so I'm just gonna shrink it down and and there's nothing happening in between so this is a bad part to apply it to but if you just have a shaft that's 10 meters long with a diameter of you know two centimeters then there's nothing happening on that shaft you can just shrink it down and show the diameter on the other piece okay Okay, so we also talked about smart dimensions. So everyone should be familiar with that. We'll talk about balloons and all that stuff uh, next time. We we'll talk about assemblies. Uh, we did hole callouts before. We also did center marks and center lines. Tables. We'll talk about those when we do assemblies. So we're pretty much getting done with drawings. Any questions on any questions on anything that we've covered so far? Uh huh. So, so this is a this is a, a counter bore, right? Instead of measuring the depth separately and doing all that stuff, I can go to whole call out. I can click on it, and it will give me. I measured. Okay, so it, it will give me the diameter of that hole and the depth of it. This is a counter bore. It will give me even more details. <coughs> okay. Any questions? All right.